we, we're kind of, I don't know, it is kind of weird, isn't it? It's like you're kind of, what's going to happen now? We can't, can't have the, can't have the, uh, commer I was going to say commercials, uh, can't have the commercials in the middle. But no, uh, uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently today. I, I'm, I'm really excited about our, our time of fasting right now. Amen. And um, I'm excited that it isn't something that we have to, it, it will not be something that we just feel like we have to do necessarily. Right. We decide to, amen? You know, how often, I got this little sticker on my car, I don't know if you got one of these on your car, but it tells me how long till I make my next oil change. And there's different ways you can decide to change your oil. You can decide to change the oil when the car quits running, <laughs> right? Because you don't know, do you? You're going along, and junk is getting in that engine, right? You, does anybody change their own oil? I change my own oil. And when you change that oil, especially if you've left a little bit, bit beyond where they told you to change it, um, what does it look like? Looks all black and thick and, and gunky. It's like, man, how does my engine run? <laughs> how does it do it, you know? Uh, and I'm so glad that we, are, we have a security, that we've been made a new creation in Christ. But we're going to look at, an, at, at some verses today that talk about this because we have something to do with our position in Christ. Amen? He has is, he is seated us in heavenly places, but we got to take a seat. Yeah, that's good. Amen? That's good. It's not just going to, we don't just say, well, I'm already seated there. I don't, it doesn't matter what I do. No, it matters. Yeah. Because if you want to experience the blessings of God, you're going to have to be in position for them. Yeah. Amen? So we're talking about this. I don't know, you want to put that little football thing up there? I don't know, is it, is it there? <laughs> This is on our website, and then I'll just do a little, I'll do a little spiel real quickly because um, we have on myworshiplife.info. That's pretty easy, isn't it? My worship life. Say, well, I gotta have a worship life, so this is my worship life. Um, dot info. Uh, there's there's a uh, um, a link on the right hand side that says Bible reading. If you go to Bible reading, we've been reading through the Bible for several months now. We got all the way to Revelation, and we said we're gonna stop. And hold off on Revelation until we get through our fasting time. And we're just going to have a daily uh, reading from the Bible. And, and then I go ahead and put a little comment thing down at the bottom of it. And then I welcome whoever wants to comment alongside of it. Um, now, to comment, you do need to create a login, which you can do that. You can just uh, create request to do that. Um, but you can also follow along on there. And you can see what's, what's going on. Uh, on, on the website there. So that, it's, a, it's a good way to stay connected. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. It's, it's like uh, in the past, a lot of times, I've just drawn from what somebody else has done, you know, and say, well, we'll follow along. I thought, you know, let's just do some stuff ourselves. And uh, like, like Pastor Kim was re referring to some of these things, um, there's an opportunity in every day for, to, to, to take this decision that I'm making to set aside my flesh and let it become something that's real in my life. Amen? I don't want to just get done with uh, three weeks of fasting and say, man, I'm glad that's over with. <laughs> you know, I might be glad to some extent, but I want to be changed completely. Yes. And, you know, uh, Hunter referred to this in his uh, commercial there, uh, that if you haven't got in on it yet, it doesn't really matter. Just, just get in on when, what you can. You know, and some people had an issue with, okay, I... I'm not going to fast food. I mean, I can't do that completely. You know, I'm working or whatever else. And they're just not, they're not able to do that. Uh, and some people, you know, medically can't do certain things, you know. But we can set aside, uh, our, our reading for today is actually from Daniel. And Daniel, he said, I, I took three weeks and I didn't allow myself to eat stuff that I like. And it, it wasn't necessarily that he quit eating. He just, meat, how many like to eat meat? You know, I don't normally eat a steak, but man, we had, went and had a steak the other day, and wow, that was really good. <laughs> it, you know, you, you chew on a little bit, and you can savor all that protein going. You can feel yourself getting strong, and <laughs> all that stuff, you know. And, and, and potatoes, you have to have mashed potatoes on. I better stop talking, haven't I? 
I got a ways. I got 14 days to go here. <laughs> but he said, I'm not going to let my flesh. Why in the world is this necessary? Because our flesh is in a battle with our spirit. And anytime you listen to your flesh, you can pretty much count on it that you're wrong. Right? And so what, what happens a lot of times is people will be led somewhere by their, by their spirit and they'll arrive there and then they'll start, their flesh just starts getting uneasy. And they say, well, I guess this wasn't right. And the spirit was saying, no, 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 listen to me, listen to me. And so you have to go back and you have to get on your schedule and say, okay, now it's time for me to clear out the junk. Right? We live in this world and you can't be so pompous to think that you're not affected by it. Right? Why do we humble ourselves before God? Because we need Him. Right? I can't go through life without God. So is He really my God? You know, I love to come in here and just pray at the top of my lungs and saying, God, I need to know you more. I don't know you yet. Something that's really impressed me lately is if you're not shaken in His presence, you're not very close. Because you get close to God, you're going to get hot. Amen? What does he say? I, I don't like things that are lukewarm, right? Is that what he says? Oh, boy, I've got too much to get through here. I want to, we're going to have a time at the end. And you can maybe, I'd like for you just to kind of prepare yourself. We're going to have communion for the next three weeks. What I want to do is to be able to, to take enough time here at the end. I, whatever I say, I believe it's anointed. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I believe that I'm anointed to share something yeah. that's, that's strong in my heart yeah. that will make a difference in your life. If you embrace it. But just like Jesus said, if you don't do anything with it, it won't make a difference in your life. But bigger than anything that I can do is the Holy Spirit. And you have to give Him time. You have to, to, to take enough time and focus on Him yourself. You know, I believe that the Holy Spirit is already here in this place. I believe it's tangible. My prayer continually is, God, come, pour yourself out on us in a way that nobody can ignore. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. But you know, there'll be, <laughs> there'll be people that are in the room when the Broncos win the Super Bowl that will not even know that it happened. <laughs> At the end. Why? But not this year. <laughs> but not this year. He, 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 thinks his, he thinks his 49ers are going to win. But, you know, we got to speak those things that be not as though they were. So that's what I'm going <laughs> to so that's what I'm going to do right now, right? What I want to talk, when I want to talk briefly about, and this is what we've been doing on the website. I was going to show that picture and everything. This is actually from our worshiplife.info. Is it's all about where we're positioning ourselves, and this is why God leaves it up to us. That so am I really your God or not? Because if I am your God, it's going to take some time out of your life. And it's going to replace some other things in your life. Is food your biggest thing in your life? Well, just take it away for a while and just let me be God. Right? I mean, you know, I found out that in this thing, I'm doing really good today. I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling really good. But I'll tell you what, those first three days, man, you know? And uh, uh, it was effective then, but again, it, it has this progression. I'm thinking, why did he go three weeks? Because there's some place you get to when you go beyond just the menial. Right? When you go beyond, now I lay me down to sleep. You know? Our dear Heavenly Father uh, uh, bless this food to our bodies. You know? Amen? And you linger there and you start to say, you actually, God actually begins to be magnified in your life above other things. Amen? What I want to touch on, touch on today, though, is our positioning. We talked about this last week. You can go back and, and see the video online or something if you want. But our positioning is so essential. God's already positioned himself. Now he leaves it up to us to position ourselves. And it's critical. It's critical for our life. You can, go, you can be saved. You can squeak into heaven and never experience the abundant life that Jesus came to give us if you don't get in position for it. Amen? And, and a big part of that positioning is what we're, we're going through these three weeks. Amen? That's what I'm looking at it for. I'm saying, God, change me. You know, we talked about this last week. There's nobody else, nobody else is responsible for your position in Christ. 
And, and yet, as soon as you find yourself wanting to blame somebody else for something, especially God. You know, people blame God, <laughs> right? And as soon as you, you find yourself shifting over into that, you can know that you're not in the right position. There's a victory that God has already accomplished in Christ. There's a victory that's ours in Him, and we just have to get in position for it. Amen? What I want to talk today, though, about is your position is so critical for your own life. But it's also critical for the body of Christ. Amen? Amen? You know, I wrote in the bulletin today, uh, uh, you know, they're taking away kickoffs from football. Basically, they're trying to anyway. They're making the, the kick go closer to where he, hopefully he'll kick it out of the end zone and they won't be able to return it. But when they return it, that's quite a play if he goes all the way, right? And it makes the highlights. But something I learned, I played football, and what they would do is they would, they, you would actually, on, on the kicking team, you, or the receiving team, you would actually set up what you thought was going to be a pathway for that return guy to make it to the end zone. You create a wall along the side. And... Um, some, a lot of times when these guys make it, it's, it's, they're going along the sideline. They're doing what has been planned. And if you go back and you actually would take an isolated camera on each player, each player was doing something that made that possible. Everybody was in position. And without them being in position, all it takes is one guy to get through. And he's, well, depends on who the runner is. Sometimes those runners are pretty amazing too. And they, they might have to, you know, juke somebody or run through somebody. But... He did not make it all the way. Let everybody say, well, I guess it's somebody else's job, and he's not going to make it down the field, right? <laughs> Our position in Christ, what we're doing right now, we are, I'll tell you what, the, the biggest challenge we have in Christ is being selfish. It's about me, yeah. right? Yeah. Good. And, and so it's not just being in Christ, it's being active in Christ taking our position in Him, letting Him consume our life above anything else. I, this is what I cry out for in, in a time of fasting. God, melt away everything else in my life. Amen? There's a reality to everything that's declared in the Word of God. If I'm not experiencing it, it's not God's fault. Amen? I need to adjust myself. I need to consecrate myself. I need to say, God, is there something in me? Is there flesh in me that's bigger than you? Because he never gets glory when there's flesh. Good. Amen? Yeah. It has to come down. It has to crumble. So, I have a video. I just want to show you this real quick. Is that all right? And it's not Christian or anything, but it's, it's, it's pretty amazing what it, it declares about having to not become stagnant. What happens to an engine that's, that the oil's getting bad? It starts to get to where it just doesn't run as good, doesn't it? And it's, it becomes stagnant. It's, it becomes to the place where it can't even move anymore. Right? How do you fight that? You put the right things inside of it. You become active. They say sometimes you need to run an engine really fast. You need to blow the junk out of it. Right? Let's just, let's just watch this real quick. Oh, what's going on, Mr. Voss? Biology, Derek. Fair enough. Can someone tell me what happens when a cell stagnates? Okay, no one's listening to me. I will try again. Anyone know what happens to a stagnant cell? What's he doing on the table? I don't know, something about cells. Malia. It's not good. Did you hear that? It ain't good. People, a cell that is not in motion is not a productive member of the system. It ends up assuming all the other cells are going to pick up the slack somewhere, but they don't. In fact, they imitate the stray cell until basically the whole organism begins to die. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Biology is an amazing thing. And here's the good news. All that decays can be restored. Is this hitting anybody? 
Like how a cut heals. Like how a cut heals. Brian, my man. Oh, you got one. <laughs> and once that cell is back on track, it creates energy amongst the other cells. That's what happens. It starts getting a little movement going. It gets a little rumble. Can I get a little rumble from everybody? Everybody just rumble in your seats right now for me. Just rumble a little bit. Okay, no rumble. That's fine. I'll be the lone rumbler up here. That's what I am. I'm a lone rumbler. But then the cell starts banging into the other cells. And the cells push back and go, hey, what are you doing to me? They hit him to another one. Hey, don't do that. He has my friend. You don't even know him. You don't know me either. I know you. We work together. Because then they hit a rhythm. All hit a rhythm and this is the beginning of the restorative process so now even if the entire system is close to dead what happens Martinez come on give me something oh no not today oh no not in my house no 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 yeah here we come don't look up my pant leg Derek you're better than that it's right over you come on man what do you say if all the cells work together, what will happen? The entire system is healed. Exactly. That is a sick dragon. Yeah! Is that cool or what? I, I, I'll confess. I was watching that, I think it was the second time I watched it, and, and I saw him dancing on the desk there. I, I just broke down. I thought, this is the heart of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That we grow up in God are, are, are self enough that we get so active that we begin to affect somebody for good. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> what the enemy wants to do is get somebody in a, in, in, a, in a portion of the body of Christ that becomes stagnant. It begins to complain. It begins to, to become an unproductive cell, a stagnant one. Yeah. What did it say it did? It'll kill the whole organism. Just one. Yeah. Right? But you get one that gets on fire. Yeah. I, li I can't do all the mo his movement. He's really fast, isn't he? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and he's, he's moving. As big as he is, he still makes a lot of cool moves. Yeah. <laughs> but what? He's been <laughs> but I thought, you know what? I don't want to just think about myself when it's a positioning thing. Jesus' prayer is that we would become one as a system that is health to each other. Amen? That it is necessary for me to become consecrated for God because somebody else needs my activity. Amen? How selfish is, of it is, <laughs> is, is it of me to ever become stagnant? That's right, that's right. It's selfish. <laughs> Everything's about me. God says everything changes in the kingdom of God. Who is the greatest? The servant, right? Amen? Amen. The least. <laughs> becomes a servant, becomes active, saying... Somebody else might have been stagnant, but that's not me. Amen? I'm going to shove. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to touch somebody in prayer. It's going to be real in my life. Amen? I don't care what the rest of America is doing. God is real. I don't care what's happened in my life. You know, I wrote a little song that I can't remember now, last night, and I hate it. But God's really impressed on me that greater than my failures and greater than somebody else's failures is the faithfulness of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We can begin to believe so much in something that's gone wrong in our life that we count on other things being wrong too, just as a result of that. You know? Or somebody failed us, so that makes it so that God isn't real and I can't have victory in my life because of somebody. No, greater than all of those things, God is real. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I will prevail if I get in line with Him. Right. If I get in position with Him. Yeah. It will require, though, on my part, removing some stuff from my life. Right. Amen? Yeah. I can't just say, okay, God's grace is cool. 
I can just leave these little pet things in my life. And they're not necessarily grievous things. You don't have to go out and murder somebody for you to not be in the right position, you know? A lot of times it's just having a nasty attitude, talking about somebody. You know what I mean? And we have to say, how does that change? Well, I'll tell you what, you get in the face of God where it's hot. hot. You get up close to Him where you can't just stay the same. You say, God, change me. Amen? That's what this is about. You know, sometimes we go into a fasting time, we say, I need this to change, I need this to change. God, get busy. I'm even not eating so that you'll work for me. <laughs> right? Yeah. And God says, let's turn that around a little bit. I said that whatever you say will come to pass right. if you're in the right position, right. if you have confidence towards me. Right. Let's make this fasting about you instead of me. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. If I get in the right place, God's already provided everything. That's what needs to take place. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 14. And, and we're familiar with this, but let's, let's embrace it with, with a responsibility embrace. Amen? Amen. Let's say, I, I, I have to be changed for a huge reason. Amen? You know, something I noticed about, um, well... Any of these quarterbacks. I know uh, Sean's going to get mad at me if I talk about Peyton too much. But um, <laughs> some pretty amazing athletes. They've given their life to it. They've prepared. When they get out there, they're in position. The thing that drives me nuts about Peyton is he wants to change the play about five times on each play. Oh, we got to change this. Tell somebody to go over here and all this kind of stuff. But you get at the end of the game after he's won everything and you say, well, great job. You say, well, it was a team effort. You know, he really believes that. He knows that if it wasn't for the team, he wouldn't be successful at all. And sometimes we think, well, all I need is Jesus. Well, you do, but you're going to need each other too. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because when it comes down to it, you're, you should be able to say, because of people in my life, yeah. I've been able to be victorious. Sure. Amen? Yeah. And because of my place in, in Christ, I'm going to make it so somebody else can be Peyton, he's not shirking anything. He says, no, I'm taking my place. But my success is dependent upon everybody else. Amen? You do not live in victory in Christ if you're not living in victory in the body. Amen? You are a stagnant cell. And you are a detriment to the body. Right? Is this too hard? <laughs> Amen? This is real, isn't it? Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is Christ. Do you ever get to be a mature body if you died somewhere along the way? <laughs> If there have been some stagnant cells that have caused you to perish and not have eternal life, right, on the way? No, a mature body is an indicative and implied that they've pressed through some challenges in their life to be restored on the way. Amen? There's restoration that's needed in this body. There's restoration that's needed in each one of our lives. And it's going to come from the balm that we get in the body of Christ. Amen? From Him, the whole body. It doesn't say just the part that you are. The whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Amen? What should be the result of my consecration to God? I become active. Active in what? Just me seeking my own way? No! Everything can, is contingent upon love, isn't it? Right? Love is an action. Love is a movement, right? I like that song. It's cool. Love isn't stagnant. Love is moving, right? So when I get closer to God, when He, he consumes my life, I become, right? Amen? 
Somebody needs to be affected by my fervor. Amen? I grow up into a body that's been restored by my activity in it. Amen? There is no singleness. There's no finger that exists without the hand and the hand connected to the arm. Amen? Amen. There is no victory without the body. Let's see. Um, let me just go on from there. They are darkened. Uh, let's see. So I tell you this, verse 17, and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. What is that? Of their thinking. What is their thinking? It's what the flesh tells them to think. Here you go, think about this. Ouchie. Oh, that's a good thought. Right? Just move by whatever the thoughts are. I think this. I really don't care what you think. Right? That's what we're doing in a fasting time. I really don't care what you think. Amen? Because it's futile. It doesn't produce anything. It produces stagnancy that is ineffective, unproductive, and destructive. Amen? They are darkened. I don't want to be darkened. I don't want to live like that. They've lost all sensitivity. They have given themselves over to sensuality so that it is to indulge in every kind of impurity and they're full of greed. That, however, is not the life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old flesh. Who puts off the old flesh? You. How do you do that? Well, there's going to have to be some... Things that take place. Some cutting off. What is cutting off? It kind of hurts. My, I like to cut off. Well, my wife's going to get after me. But, you know, if you have those little things that grow on you. We won't name anything, but, you know. Or these little, these little, these little, uh, these little <laughs> warts. Okay. How do you get rid of a wart? It's going to hurt, isn't it? Well, if you go to the doctor and you say, oh, give me a shot and all that kind of stuff. But if you do it like a man, right? <laughs> if you, if, right, you dig that puppy out of there. <laughs> or, like, I'll, I'll take a, a, uh, a soldering iron. You know, you can take a soldering iron and, and sizzle that thing. And, and it'll, it'll go away. You have to kind of bear it a little bit. But, you know. Oh. Works, works for me. Works for me. I've actually done it to my ch- Okay. <laughs> We're going on from here, right? (laughs) But the things that are unproductive, that are actually ugly and and cause you to be less than perfect, (laughs) right? They're going to require some purposeful and appointment of cutting them away. They said, man, I just wish that thing would go away. No, it's not. Until you do something about it, right? (laughs) You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old flesh, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. You know, something I thought was really interesting about that phrase um, is he's talking to Christians, isn't he? And either he's just a man that's really not in faith or there's some understanding to be gained about this is that your position can be changing if you're not purposefully cutting off. Right? He says, uh, let's see, where are we here? Um, He says, your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. That means that even though I've been given a new, been made a new creation in Christ, that I'm still sitting here, standing here in this flesh that's trying to tell, give me directives in my life, right? Right? And when I listen to those directives, and when they control my life, Jesus is no longer Lord, and I am being deceived. Right? I'm being corrupted. Is that right? He says, He says, put off those things to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on a new self, created to be like God, in true righteousness and holiness. 
You know, I, I think as God being as big as he is, he should be able to just do this to us, don't you think? He should just make robots out of us. Then um, it wouldn't be any problem. God, have you ever prayed like that? God, just fix me, please, just fix me. He says, I already have. I've already given you Christ. I've already been made you a new creation. Now you take your place in me. Amen? That's what he's saying. Because he's, he's telling these people to do this. How powerful of a role do we have in taking our position? Amen? Now what's really interesting, he's talking to individuals right here, but this is coming from having said to be a part of the body. Amen? That there is no fulfillment in Christ. There's no fulfillment in your personal life until there's fulfillment in the body. Hallelujah. If you go down a little further, it's, well, again, the things that are talked about here, uh, if you go down to uh, verse 29, these are things that I believe will try to attach themselves to anybody. And uh, if you'll just be humble and say, God, I need, to be, I need to be on guard. I need to be ready to, to extract these things from my life at any time because they're going to come on you. If you live in this flesh, if you ever talk to anybody, if you've ever had any old man who things come up in your life, they're going to want to arise again. Amen? That's, and these are things that, again, in, uh, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. How many have had any unwholesome talk? You know, I was, I was in the, oh boy, I got to go. Got to keep moving. I'll tell you this real quick, though. I was, I was in the, at, the, at the health club the other day, and, and um, I was listening to some people talking, and this lady was saying that she, was, she led worship at a church here. And, and, um, and then this other person that, that went to that, that gathering, he, 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 he started to, to talk about how somebody needed to say this, foul word in their workplace so that people would understand. They said, yeah, you know, you just have to talk that way in order for people to even listen to what you're saying, especially in the workplace. And she says, yeah, the, 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 the worship leader lady said, yeah, that's what my husband tells me that he has to do at work. And I thought, really? <laughs> so, so, so God quits being your job, uh, uh, your God at any time in your life? Then he's not, Right? And you're not that vibrant, alive cell. You're a stagnant cell, right? You're not consecrated. You know, I, I, that's, that's a drastic thing, but it doesn't have to go that far. What do we say to each other in the home? It doesn't have to be a four-letter word. It can be demeaning. It can be dishonoring. Be disrespectful, right? And, and what happens when I'm getting in the face of God. He says these kinds of things cannot be if you're going to be in a position for victory. Right? But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Wow! Some work needs to be done, right? He's saying if, if, there's, if there's anything other than that, you got to make an appointment. Let's get that thing cut off. Amen? that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. But get rid of all. He's not talking about fornication or anything. He's talking about bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. These are just attitudes, aren't they? Interpersonal activity. Kind of like what he was talking about. How are we affecting? Amen? This is where God wants to touch us. He says, I cannot be victorious as a body until you're victorious as a person in my body, as a part of my body. There's things that God wants to do. Amen? In the kingdom. And if we seek first the kingdom of God, all the things that the flesh is crying out for, ah, oh, flesh, shut up. You're going to get it. Right? You just get your face in God's face. Amen? Be kind and compassionate. This is one that my, my sisters and my parents made me memorize. I, was, I think it was the first verse I memorized, actually in the King James Version, because it's be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. And, and uh, oh, brother, isn't that terrible? 
huh? Even as Christ. Uh, <laughs> you ever do that? You have a, a, a block when you're trying to remember something? Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Amen? I was a mean little kid. <laughs> um, so the word of God can come in and make a change in our life. Amen? Amen. I am thankful that today we are not on our own here. Amen? Amen? But we've been made one with the greater one. Amen. And I love to sing the songs that we sang today. Our God is greater. Yes. Amen? Yes. But this isn't just a, a mamby-pamby exercise of singing songs. If our God is greater, He said, I'm one with you. I've come to live in you, to breathe in you, to be victorious in you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Um, uh, let, let's, let's just go, let's go on here. I, I have some other things here, but um, like I was saying, the biggest thing that needs to take place in us, we can, we can nod our head this morning, we can say, yeah, that's true. Um, but I want to challenge us. I, you know, the, the thing that burns on my heart when I, when I think about each person that is here whenever we're having a, a time of sharing is, God, let them be changed. And I know it's not up to me. Amen? But I'll tell you what, I've done everything I can this morning to put myself in position, to throw a block, to do whatever it takes to make a difference here this morning. Amen? But we need to say, okay, now I'm going to take my position. I'm going to get, because I'll, I'll tell you what, just agreeing with me this morning will do nothing in your life until you set your face in God's face and you say, God, you begin to talk to him for some time. <coughs> Amen? Yeah. It's going to have to be a period of time. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So I'm going to take some time here this morning. And, and, and uh, for the next three weeks, we're going to have uh, communion on every, every uh, Sunday morning. And uh, I'm going to take some time right now. We're going we're gonna to dim the lights a little bit. I want everybody in this place to participate with us. Amen? I'll tell you what, for today, there's a consecration that I need in my life. It doesn't matter where I've been. It doesn't matter what I've done in the past. I have to be broken before God right now and say, God, you are my God today. Amen? If I expect any victory in my life, it has to be for today in His face that I am. Amen? So what we'll do, we're going to dim the lights a little bit. I'm going to go sing. Okay, I'm just going to sing some worship songs. But this isn't about my song, You Don't Need to Sing With Me. I'd like for everybody to come up, serve yourself. We have some, uh, uh, we have some juice and some bread up here. Come up, serve yourself, and take a place on a knee if you want to stay up here, if you want to go back to your seat. But I, I would like for everybody to take at least 15 minutes. Can we do that? Amen? And let's cry out to God from our hearts. Let's say, God, I don't want to be stagnant. I want to be changed by your presence. I want to begin to affect your body for good. I don't want to be a weight in your body. I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want anything that's coming out of me to not be you. Amen? The only way that happens is when flesh is crushed and he is exalted. He's magnified made to be bigger than anything else in our life. Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm going to, let, let me just pray. And uh, while I'm praying, I'm going to get ready here, okay? If you can all just uh, bow your head with me right now. Let's just, let's just get ready to get right in God's face. Father God, we magnify you. Father God, I thank you for this morning, that this is an appointed time for every person that's here. And God, we come with a desire that is, that is far greater for you than anything else in our life. We, we recognize that truth, O oh Lord. We recognize that requirement for our life. And Father God, we, we determined that we're not going to let this moment pass us by. That you said that you would meet us here. That you said where two or three are gathered, you're right there with us. And Father God, we don't want to be complacent about you. We don't want to ignore you, Lord God. But if you're great anywhere, if you've been great to anybody, if you've ever done anything, you want to do it in our life right now, today. 
Lord, we set ourselves to worship you. We set ourselves to pursue you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to take some time and remember what you've done for us. Remember, Lord God, Lord Jesus, with a consecrated heart. Say, God, may your trip to the cross be reality in my life today. Lord, I, I take everything in my life that is flesh to that cross. I crucify it. I tear it away in your presence. And I cry out to you, O oh God, to make that a reality in my life. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and begin. And if, uh, if you want to just uncover those elements there, Luke, that's great. Um, So, so, buddy, if you want to let me know when 15 minutes is up, I don't have a clock. I don't want to press it beyond what I've said. I might go a little bit longer, but at that point, I'm going to dismiss everybody, and we can stay as long as you want. But I just encourage everybody, let's don't rush off. There's an opportunity in God's presence today. that Let's don't let it pass us by. Amen. I cast my crowns. At your feet, I lay before you all that I am. I cast on you all of my cares to let your nearness be my passion. I cast my crowns. At your feet, I lay before you all that I am. I cast on you all of my cares to let your nearness be my passion. I want the joy. I want the peace, I want the strength that I find alone in your presence. I desire your holy fire to burn within me a heart to carry your presence. your feet I lay before 